Well, Beta has left behind a, a big mess in parts of Southeast Texas. Take a look at the, the flooded streets in Pearland that's just outside of Houston. Some drivers, though, not heeding those warnings. You guys hear, wow, you hear this all the time. Houston's fire department says they rescued more than 60 people from their vehicles. Take a look at uh, some of this drone video of highways. These are highways, freeways in Houston. Flooded, can barely uh, recognize them there. Well, so many lessons uh, to be found in Mother Nature, and that's our focus today, the recipe for a hurricane. So I want to bring in uh, meteorologist Kyle Roberts and our special guest, Sammy Dupnik uh, from the Perot Museum of Science and Nature. Yeah, and so we are talking about hurricanes today, and you know we just we just saw this with Beta, and we just saw, saw see this a lot with these uh, tropical systems. You know, they're hurricanes or tropical storms over the ocean, and then once they move inland, they tend to weaken. So what's going on there? What exactly is fueling these storms? Exactly, and that's exactly what we're going to be experimenting with you all today. So thank you all so much for tuning in for WFAA Academy. Uh, my name is Sammy Dupnik, and I'm the Earth Science Guest Engagement Manager here at the Perot Museum of Nature and Science. So that means that I study and engage on all things Earth science. So what's happening inside the Earth, on the surface of the Earth, and in our atmosphere, which is exactly what we're going to be talking about today. And we're in the peak of hurricane season here in the Atlantic Ocean, um, and especially here in Texas, which we're all so familiar with. So we're going to be experimenting on the different ingredients that make this time of year ripe for hurricanes. So what so are some of those ingredients? That's a great question. So this time of year is perfect for hurricanes to form because the things that a hurricane needs are heat, water, wind, and pressure. And this time of year between June and November 30th in the Atlantic Basin uh, is when all of those four ingredients are in their, uh, in their prime to work together to create these very large storms. So show us the experiment that we're working with here today. Awesome, so we're gonna be do doing our first experiment on water and heat and what happens when during these summer months, the ocean and the atmosphere heat up. Now, before we do that, a quick note on safety. Um, I do have my mask on today because I'm experimenting with some colleagues here at the museum. Um, I'm going to be wearing some safety goggles because we'll, we, we will be using an open flame. And I've got some heat protectant gloves. So in my flask here, we've got not only some water in its liquid form, but water in its gaseous vapor form as well. And this is going to be modeling our Atlantic Ocean. My open flame that I have here is going to be modeling the heat energy that comes from the sun during these uh, intense summer months uh, during in and around the tropics. And as we add heat to this system, I want everybody at home to be meteorologists with me and make some observations of what's happening inside of our flask here. So what happens when heat energy interacts with matter, or in this case, water and water vapor, we're gonna see our molecules are gonna start to gain energy. They're going to expand and what we might be noticing now with our balloon is they're going to start to rise. So Hopefully everybody can see this yes, happening Yes, we at see home. it developing. So can you explain exactly what's happening inside of the flask? Because of course we're coming to our own conclusions. Can you explain that to us? Yeah, exactly. So as this heat energy is interacting with the water and the water vapor here, just like it would with our oceans, uh, that water is going to begin to heat up expand and it's going to become less dense which is going to allow it to rise high up into the atmosphere and in this case i've made a closed system so all of that water uh heated water is stuck inside and inflating our balloon and what happens over the ocean is as that warm water rises high up into the atmosphere it's actually going to cool back down and condense into large clouds Wait, Sammy, so if you would have kept the torch underneath, would that balloon blow off the top? I just want to know. It absolutely could, yes. That's a great Man, question. that was the that's finale, Sammy. That was the finale. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay, look, Sammy, we'll be right back with you right after this short break, and she's going to have some more uh, of this experiment recipe for a hurricane. We'll be right back.